Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to read strictly through for the um, immune system on page 742 of your textbook, chapter 32, and it's going to continue on to 743. Um, for those of you who are auditory learners, for those of you that are visual learners, you'll want to read it yourself. Um, for those of you who are visual and auditory learners, you may want to take your book and read along with me. Um, that's okay. Then I'm going to, you'll see um, the next slides in the presentation, it will explain each thing. So the immune system defends the body against threats from inside and out. And some of these threats include pollen, toxins, bacteria, viruses, and other cells that have become abnormal. Immunity means that the person has protection against the disease or condition, and the person will not contract or be affected by the disease. There's two types of defense mechanisms or immunity classified as non-specific immunity or specific immunity. Non-specific immunity is the body's reaction to anything that it does not recognize as the normal body substance. And this type of immunity, you can see a diagram up on page 743 at the top, you'll see this type of immunity. Um, the first line of defense includes mechanical barriers, for example, intact skin, and mucous membranes. Chemical barriers, for example, tears, stomach acid, saliva, and perspiration, and reflexes such as coughing, sneezing, vomiting, and diarrhea. So those are all our natural, non-specific immunity. Something comes in my body and these things happen or protect me. The second line of defense includes the following, phagocytes, which are white blood cells that ingest and destroy microorganisms and other unwanted substances. Inflammation, which is the release of histamines to an injured or irritated area, causing blood vessels to dilate and bring more blood to the area. Histamines cause redness, heat, and leakage of the blood, which leads to swelling. Fevers is stimula <coughs> stimulates phagocytosis, which means the ingesting or engulfing of other cells and decreases the ability for certain pathogens to multiply. Then we have, so that's all non-specific immunity. Then we have specific immunity. It is the ability of the body to resist or overcome certain diseases or infection caused by a foreign agent such as a pathogen or an antigenic, sub, an anti, antigenic substance. Special cells and substances provide immunity. The first we have is antibodies. These are normal body substances that recognize abnormal or unwanted substances and attack and destroy the substance. Antigens are abnormal or unwanted substances, usually protein, that cause the body to produce antibodies which attack and destroy the antigens. We have lymphocytes, which is the white blood cells that produce antibodies and the production of which increase in the body's response to an infection. Then we have B lymphocytes or B cells, um, cells that cause the production of antibodies that circulate in the plasma. And T lymphocytes or T cells are cells that destroy invading cells. Killer T cells produce a toxic substance near the invading cells and some of the T cells attack other cells that in destroy the invaders. You'll see in my video that I just put them all lumped together as white blood cells. So once you get into nursing, you'll want to, or any other education, you will be learning more about the different types of cells. When the body senses an antigen, which is an unwanted substance, the immune system is activated and phagocyte and lymphocyte production increases. Phagocytes destroy the invaders through digestion and lymphocytes produce antibodies that attack the unwanted and destroy the unwanted substances. Antibodies produced by B cells react to specific antigens. Immunity to disease can be classified as genetic immunity and acquired immunity. Genetic immunity protects a member of one species from a disease that afflicts another species. For example, your cat will not catch chicken pox from you. A person can get acquired immunity either naturally or artificially. Natural immunity can be acquired in two ways. Active immunity by naturally acquiring the illness such as chicken pox. Your body develops the antibodies to protect you from getting it.
And then we have passive immunity is short lived and passed from the mother to the fetus through the placenta and from the mother to the baby through breast milk. And this protection lasts about six months. Artificially acquired immunity is, achieve, is achieved by injection of a vaccine or an immune globulin. A vaccine is a small amount of an antigen bearing substance or the pathogen that is injected into the person to stimulate the production of the fighters or antibodies. Immune globulin is obtained from a donor who already has the antibodies and that is injected into the person to pro provide passive immunity. So once you've done listening, you can continue on with the slides and or um, it will help explain what I have just read. Thank you.